Hello everybody, Retro Beard here again. How are you all today? Hope you're doing good. Today, um, I'll try Mega Man Legacy Collection. Um, I've never played, much to my shame, met much of Mega Man. I've only had the odd bit here and there, so I'm not, I don't have nostalgia or memories of this series. Um, but I know that with its pedigree and its history, um, I mean, it really deserves, I really owe it to, to, you know, to try it and give it a go. This is the Legacy Collection um, on my Xbox One. I got Liquid Price a while ago. Um, well, technically got it free, but yeah. You know, um, it's... I've liked, I liked the look of the Mega Man games and I, and I, I did prefer the, the more sort of PlayStation 1 onwards titles by how they looked and what little of Duck played them here and there so I'll give this a go with an open mind um so how you, how's your day been all, all good hope life's treating you well and these um very strange times are not getting you down or being kept in kept inside more isn't getting too hard I mean I'm, I'm luckier than most in that regard because I love being at home got a nice home, nice home life. Um, I haven't always in my life, but I have at the moment. Um, surrounded by, you know, good people. Um, got lots of nice things to enjoy that I've been accumulating, which I hopefully won't come to regret. Um, yeah, so I know some people haven't. Some people, some people don't like being indoors. They like to always be out, you know, what doing what they consider doing things, you know. Whereas for me, I like I like going out to places, but in moderation. So, you know, perhaps I'm more like a hobbit, you know, in Lord of the Rings. I like the comforts of home, my warm, my warm fire, my comforts and things. So, you know, but each to their own. I'll give this a little um, a go. Games. What have we got? Six. I guess. Because I'm a complete newbie beyond watching others and videos and seeing things, I'll give the first Mega Man a go. Just please go easy on me, because I am—I don't have any familiarity with what I'm about to do. Um, options, controls. Hmm, this is good, isn't it? I'll play it stock and see what happens. Well, I'll try Put Man, is it? So this is a Famicom slash um, NES game, isn't it, originally? Platformer type game. Oh wow, it is, yeah. So, well that wasn't a good start. I've got to see what powers this guy's got. He's got Jump, Shoot, and Special... Single... Oh. So, those things can fly through scenery, that's not good. Oh, man. So, how do you get this? This is a tough game. Oh, more? I bet people who were good at this game are like watching me wincing. I want more of these suckers. They only shoot in front of you, but they come from all directions. Wow. I know my um, my lack of skill at this game is perhaps not a um, not the game's fault, but this is a bit inexcusable. I mean, these things fly. Has he got other powers? Am I doing something wrong? No, it's only straightforward. I might not be playing this one for very long because. I'm not saying I'll never play it again. Maybe it's a game where you can't dilly dawdle around. Look, I wish this guy could shoot in different directions, but they just troll you. Yeah. This game is perhaps wasted on me. When you're a kid and you've got loads of hours to master the nuances, 
one thing, but when you just pick it up and play him... I know it all sounds like an excuse, but... I think you can see my point. Look at these things, they fly... How do you get them if they fly in different directions? I feel like I could turn into the angry video game nerd with all this. That he's probably good at this game. He's falling down down here. Yeah? Multi directional shooting. I'm the only guy who can't do multi directional shooting in this game. This is all timing. <sighs> well. This game turned you to nervous wreck. Seems to be if you dawdle by like hanging around doing nothing, that's when you get your butt kicked in this game. Most players never had it easy, did they? I tell you, um. When we were, you know, kids in these days, casual gamers, there was no um, no room for casual gamers, was there? Every game was too ruthless for a casual gamer. Yeah. I think I'll be turning this one off. Is there a way of getting off this? Weird. I'll try a different one. I can appreciate this game um, for its time. But I don't have the time to get good at a game that I would have been, I would have had time of when I was, you know, seven or eight or whatever. And I'd have spent whole summers on this game, wowing at the graphics. Now it's just like a blast from the past, you know, from we can see the times, but uh, let's try two. Let's see if two is a bit more. Normal difficult. And I want easy difficult. Or not. You can see this sort of, um, for its time, an anime sort of, uh, vibe going on. If this is more of the same, I won't hang around. I know the game's not fault. Oh! Wow. Talk about putting you in the deep end. Nice effect on the cloud, that would have been quite graphically impressive. All those years ago, yet. Oh, man, what am I doing? There's a, bit, there's a bit of input delay on the um, buttons as well. That must be the, the um, emulation in the wireless joystick control pads. This game does not need input lag, does it? And the fact that I suck as well. You can't... I have to wait for it to go now. I'm going to take, take this one off as well. I don't have the... Um, I don't have the self-esteem to have this done to me today. What about the last in the series, 6? Maybe this, um, maybe this is just a ruthless game series. Oh. 20XX, that's a good year. Yeah, whatever. I don't care about the story. Pass word. Windman, that sounds like me sometimes. Wow, bit of a leap in the old, um, presentation, isn't there? Oh, the sprite's still the same, though. Oh yeah, I'm going to shoot things, haven't I? I just think I can walk forwards. Oh, poo. Oh! Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Rolling effects. Oh, really? At least he's got a health bar. So much of my suckage is tolerated, and so I've got to fly up and get this or miss. 
Oh, yeah, so that goes up. Oof. I bet long time players this game are watching me going, what the heck? Okay, my attacks don't hurt this thing. No, 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 I didn't want to do that. Try to heart attack. Oh great, that's stuffed up there. Oh, what do I land me on it? Still. Oh, I have to admit it. I won't be playing this game again. I do appreciate, like I said earlier, if you're playing it for a long time, you master it. The timing and all that. I don't like timing based games where you have to master the pattern, but I know a lot of people do. But I don't because when you watch and here's here's my reason why I don't. When you watch um a film, read a book, watch anime, whatever, the hero defeats the enemy or beats the objective through his or her resourcefulness, blind luck, talent. They don't beat it by going through it again and again and again to remember, rem to remember the patterns. So it defeats the spontaneity of feeling like you've got to where you are through your training and gifts. And occasionally a hero gets a second chance at doing an adventure, like say when Luke met Darth Vader in Empire, then in Return of the Jedi it was a bit more equipped to go toe to toe. Well, I know that's debatable, but that's the idea of the film at least. So I, I know when games were made, they weren't thinking like that, they were just working with what they had. But I'm saying in, in how I suspend my disbelief. I like my disbelief to be suspended. So when you know so yeah. I've never been a big fan of memorizing patterns of things. Although I've done my share of it, don't get me wrong, because that was the games we had. No, it's always If I get good at this game, it's because I've played it so many times and I've learned from each mistake. Not because I'm actually good, because I've got talent, so to speak. I know that is a talent. I hope you know what I mean, because I don't want to insult anybody. That's just me. We've all got a few points. And I respect anybody who's good at games. Like, I'm clearly not good at this game. I don't have the time to put 20-30 hours into this. Oh, I love the patience again. Some getting crankier and older. I hate that the way they speed up. Walk through it. Oh, that's how to do it. Yeah. I've been meaning to play this in my collection for a while. But out of respect of such an old franchise. I'll have to play it a bit on my own for a out of will though. I'm a, bit, I'm a bit torn, you know, you see franchises like this and you want to play them, you want to honour them and, and, and do what the people in the past did, but, because you, you know, because I missed out on it, because it... I know Americans and North American people, um, they had a very different retro game experience to, um, West to European people and British people. Um, and this is where a lot of confusion happens. Like a lot of, hey, a lot of American um, and North American YouTubers talk about the great video game crash in the 80s and how Nintendo swept in and saved the day with the NES and, and fixed things and set the pace. You see, in Europe and in the UK, that never happened. That was that's a complete different. We never had that. In the 80s, our video gaming industry boomed. It never ever crashed. It never has crashed because we had one advantage uh, or difference over the Americans. We had um, microcomputers. Um, one example of a microcomputer some of you might be familiar with is the Commodore 64. We had that here as well. It was a big one, um, which ran cassette games and I believe cartridge games and maybe some sort of discs, rarely. Um, and we had another computer called a um, ZX um, Spectrum or Sinclair um, Sinclair ZX um, and that's not you know it was a it was a European and a, and a British computer so it is pronounced Z even though it would be what 
technically it'd be ZX to Americans, it's actually ZX, and, and, I, and I always appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, it, and that was an amazing computer, although it was technically, in some areas, less powerful than um, Commodore 64, it certainly had its own set of strengths. And so our 8-bit our 8-bit gaming in the 80s was computing, not console gaming. We did have a few consoles like the Master System, the NES, um, Atari, a few of the Atari models, but we never. You see, the big difference is cartridge games have always been expensive, haven't they? Relatively, you know, even back then, a better cartridge game was what 20, you know, 20 pounds or 20 dollars or whatever. You could buy a brand new game for a microcomputer for one or two pounds. And the really, really big box ones were perhaps ten pound. So when you look at one pound between one and ten pound, and, and quite often one or two pounds for a game, for an eight-bit quality game, why would you have a cartridge? The, the only advantage cartridges had at the time was they loaded instant, nigh on instantly, where cassettes took a couple of, a minute or two. And then of course we evolved onto um, other home computers like the Commodore Amiga and the Atari ST, which were far more powerful than the NES. They were more rivaling, um, you know, Mega Drive slash Genesis or a Super Nintendo, and they certainly had strengths that they didn't have because they um, they they um, not only retained cheap games because of the discs, they also were a full-on PC for the time with lots of productivity software and stuff. Um, that was PC gaming, I guess. Microcomputing evolved into that. I mean, by that point, we did have the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo, and they were starting to become popular. But it wasn't instant, it was a transition. So, there you have it. In spite of my um, lack of finesse in this game, you know, I told anybody who wasn't aware, key difference between our cultures, we never had a video game crash. That's something I've heard again and again on American YouTube channels, and it blows my mind. It's amazing. We had this video game crash, and it also blows my mind. And please don't, if you're American, don't feel patronised or insulted. You were stuck with the Atari. I know you hold it precious, but oh my god, it was technically a piece of junk. You know, while you were while you were playing these games with these rectangles making beeping noises, I was playing games not so technically inferior to this. I mean, the only, I mean, okay, I had less colour. Our, my, my, our microcomputers of the, early, of the early sort to mid-80s had less colours, generally, than the NES. But I was playing games where you were jumping and exploring and in mazes, and we even had some 3D, um, wireframe 3D graphic games and stuff. And, and people, poor folks in America, were playing the top rubbish Atari games, which I know there are some fun games, but it's certainly not from a technical standpoint, is it? It's from a gameplay standpoint. And yeah, I'm paying a lot of money for it. I do like the wood on the Atari, and I like the feel of the retro hardware, but hardware-wise it was very behind, you know. Yeah, the Nintendo, that was when that first came out, that wasn't behind. The NES was very impressive when it first came out. It probably in some areas surpassed some of the microcomputers we had until the Amiga and the ST came along and then they blew out of the water, but, you know, <sighs> crazy. Well, we had a computer called the Amstrad, um, CPC I believe it was called, that probably rivaled a NES, if not surpassed it, it was out in a similar time, but yeah, um, we've always had, even, you know, Whereas other countries at games consoles, we had the granddaddy of the PC. We were doing things like prone programming, like people doing retro pie, you know, not retro pie, people doing um, Raspberry Pis. We were doing that home programming, making our own little games and stuff back in the early 80s and, and you know, and um, buying magazines and making making games from the code in it and stuff. It, 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 was, a, it was amazing. I, I feel quite bad, really. I mean, Obviously, things looked looked better for American people with the uh, NES, but before that, God, those are you know amazing. Our different cultures, and then, then of course you get countries like Brazil, which they were they had the Master System and Mega Drive right through. I mean, and still got them now, I believe. I think at least the Mega Drive is fantastic. All our different cultures and our game, the gaming things we've got in common, and the gaming things we've got different. Anyway, I'm, I'm blabbering on, so I'm going to call it a day because. This has not been my favourite playthrough, but at least we've had a good chat. Um, 
So I hope you have a great day. Look after yourselves. If you do enjoy this content or any others of mine, any of any other of mine, please like, subscribe, share, click the notification bell, leave a comment. I don't mind anything you got to say, criticism, questions, praise, um, jokes, whatever, you know, um, you can, you know, um, so look after yourselves. Thank you very much for all your help. Take care. This is Retrobid signing off. See ya.